My name is Christina Andrus. Um, for my research paper on Stedman Suriname, I chose to focus on Gabriel Stedman as a person and how I feel that he is something of a humanitarian, even though he does have some contradictions because he's not completely against slavery as an institution, but yet he um, eventually would become an important tool for abolitionists to use later on. Um, I'll start by saying who he was and a little bit about why he was there. Um, he spent five years in Suriname, um, which would result in one of the best accounts we have of plantation society in the Americas because he was so detailed. Um, he was sent there to subdue rebel slaves who had escaped into the rainforest. It was becoming a big problem there. Um, and while he was certainly not without his moral defects, he expresses genuine compassion and empathy for the slaves he encounters in Suriname. Um, he does drink quite a bit, and he has some liaisons with different women, um, but he still does emerge as a good person overall. Um, uh, as a young person, he felt really badly for animals and um, things when other people would inflict pain on them or hurt them. Um, I thought it was interesting that even though he was a soldier from the time he was like 16, he still held on to this um, sentiment um, and really never deviates much from that. Um, throughout his narrative, there emerges a certain moral code that Stedman seemed to align himself to, and this facet of his personality um, manifests itself in different forms. This is evident in the way that he expresses sensitivity and concern for the enslaved population of Suriname, and also in instances where his sensibilities stirred him to perform acts of compassion, all while he was um, employed as a soldier there. Um, one of the first things that I noticed that was sort of contradictory is that he describes the slaves that were revolting, saying that what they did, they did have a spirit of revenge for the barbarous and inhuman treatment they had been subject to at the hands of their masters. This shows that he actually stopped to think about um, why they were revolting in this way and burning other plantations down and why they had done this, almost like he's justifying the fact that they're doing that. Um, he doesn't feel that it would have gotten this out of hand if it hadn't been for the ill treatment that they had endured. Um, but yet he also says the strictest discipline is necessary for their own benefit. Um, other people have, many other people have written about his narrative and about him. Um, in his review of the edition of the narrative edited by Van Leer, Claude Levy rates Stedman as reliable, courageous, and down to earth. In the introduction, um, he also, Van Leer describes Stedman as a humane and keen observer who understood the characteristics of the people in the land and intended to build up moral resistance against slavery. Um, this we know isn't really true, that wasn't his intention to build up a resistance against slavery. Um, Levy also critiqued Stedman's elaborate descriptions of torture as going a little overboard. Um, he states that Stedman, like many other humanitarians, was also guilty of exploiting the slaves by harping on the sensational aspects of slavery. The American abolitionist um, the Unitarian minister Thomas Wentworth Higginson would devote two chapters of his book, Travelers and Outlaws, to Stedman's experience in, in experiences in Suriname. Higginson um, recounts one of Stedman's first encounters with the brutality of slavery. This is one of the first things he sees upon arriving. Um, he witnessed a slave girl being beaten and he describes her, Stedman describes her as a most miserable young woman in chains, simply covered with a rag around her loins, which was like her skin cut and carved by the lash of a whip in a most shocking manner. Um, this punishment was for something very minor that she had done, and she was supposed to receive 200 lashes, lashes and carry around a 100 pound weight. Um, so this is one of his first descriptions of excessive punishment. Higginson stated that Stedman's first days in Suriname 
and gave a glimpse into a state of society worthy of this exhibition. Men without mercy, women without modesty, the black man a slave to the white man's passions, and the white man a slave to his own. Um, other historians have also analyzed this first encounter. Um, Tassie William, in an article, claims that Stebbins' writings had a tendency to romanticize certain aspects of his experiences. Um, William interprets this passage pertaining to this young woman's suffering as a way for Stedman to present himself as a man of sensibility, observing and reporting to the reader the cruelty of the colonists. But she claims that his main goal here was to create a context in which his sentimental romance seems at home. That's, of course, the romance he had with the mulatto girl, Joanna. Um, William also felt that Stedman would alternate stories of horror with ones that described the beautiful Negro maid Joanna, which means that he is separating her from those scenes of horror. And it is her observation that Stedman is aiming to give the impression that Joanna is somehow detached from slave society, and even though this is impossible because she herself is a slave. Um, Mario Clarer points out that although he never explicitly denounced slavery per se, Stedman's account of his experiences as an English officer in Suriname in the 1770s became one loud voice in a chorus of texts and parliamentary debates on the inhumanity of slavery and the slave trade. Um, it's because of this particular paradox that his narrative can be, t to me, taken as authentic. Um, he didn't have an ulterior motive. He wasn't an abolitionist. He was simply reporting on things that he saw. Um, the Price Introduction, a book that we read in class, um, to the narrative also points out that this distinction points out this distinction, stating that precisely because he was no abolitionist, Stebbins accounts of the behaviors and attitudes of Suriname's masters and slaves take on special authority. And I think that's true. Um, even though he writes repeated accounts of all these terrible things, um, he also points, uh, Stedman points out that there are planners who treat their slaves with respect and do not abuse them, and he thinks that that is how they should be treated. Um, he asserts that he personally witnessed instances where plantation slaves were treated with utmost humanity. Um, he also notes many times in his narrative that the planners should not abuse their subjects, but does not think that freeing the slaves all at once is the correct way to go about things either. Um, but then again, it's no wonder why abolitionists would have used this as a tool um, later in defense of their cause. Um, Stedman is a romantic. Um, when he writes about Joanna, he says it makes him reflect on the whole aspect of slavery because he says, when reflecting on the state of slavery altogether and my ears being stunned to the clang of the whip and the dismal yells of the wretched Negroes on whom it was inflicted, when considering that this might one day be the fate of the unfortunate mulatto Maeve I have above described, should she chance fall into the hands of a tyrannical master or mistress. Um, Stedman often described the indigenous people of Suriname in very positive, glowing terms. Um, he asked the question, why in the name of humanity should they undergo the most cruel racks and tortures, entirely depending upon the despotic caprice of their proprietors and overseers, which is well known is too generally the case throughout the West Indies. Um, he describes numerous scenes of injustice and brutality. Um, there was the, when he's traveling with Reinsdorp, um, the elderly man who was sentenced to a hundred lashes, um, the slave pulls out a knife to defend himself and when he can't, he stabs himself and he survives and as punishment has to be changed to change to the furnace that distills the, the kill devil that they drink um, and was covered head to toe with blisters from the heat. Um, Stedman notices how magnificent this estate is, but yet at the same time, here's this man who's covered in all these wounds. Um, and he says that, uh, it couldn't dissipate the gloom of the infernal furnace had left upon my spirits, a damp of such dusky nature that no faint sunshine can evaporate. Such here is the state of slavery. Um, he also reports that another house he was at, uh, Mr. Lock Lulkins, 
Um, his son was only 10 years old and he slapped an elderly servant because she had accidentally touched his hair. Um, he frequently speaks of how cruel the female slave owners were in particular. Um, one would kill a young girl out of jealousy and then for murdering this poor girl, this woman was banished to another village. Um, he also has strong feelings about justice and how unequally justice is um, given out. Uh, he talks about seven captive slaves, six were hanged and one broken alive at the rack. At the same time, he notices a white man receiving essentially a slap on the wrist for stealing and then a black man who committed the same crime was punished to death. Mm -hmm. um, and of course there's a horrible story of the infant that was taken from its mother and, and drowned just because it was crying. Um, so these are all really horrible scenes. Um, he also holds on to this sentiment even on the battlefield. Um, he talks about, uh, this is discussed in the introduction, in Price's introduction, to the narrative, um, Stedman is so struck with pity at the condition of the rebel warriors that he purposely missed opportunities to fire upon them even if he had a clear shot. Um, also while he was in the jungle, you know, and during terrible um, circumstances, he describes giving food to one of the rebels. It was an elderly man who'd wandered into the camp um, and he ordered them not to shoot him and he took pity on him and gave him something to eat. Um, Another incident that I think shows that he's not trying to make himself sound pious or anything, he's just a human being. Um, he has a little too much to drink when he goes to Wana Creek and punches another guy and then has a scuffle with another one, passes out and then wakes up with a hangover and atones to what he did. Um, on the slave trade, he is pretty adamant that he's not against the slave trade because if properly looked after, they he feels that they would be inc incomparably more happy than those of either our sailors or soldiers. Um, the buying of slaves is not so much a bad thing as some might say, it is what happens to them afterwards. In other words, he's basically condoning slavery itself while maintaining that it is how the slaves are treated that's the real issue here. Um, on emancipating the slaves. He says, I cannot help thinking it ungenerous, thus wishing to deprive the West India planters of their property, so he's referring to them as property, um, by a sudden abolition of the slave trade, because they have no other way to make a living. Are they to be slaves or free people? Stedman says they should not be set free. This is for their own good, as they are prone to debauchery and indolence and like an unbridled horse will gallop to the destructive of himself and tramples under his feet all he meets with. Basically, he feels that slaves will have a better life than even if they were free, if they're owned by a kind master. He compares this to the master-apprentice relationship that exists in England. Um, let's see. So, in conclusion, the fact that he was in the tropics in the most harsh and tough environment, got sick all the time, and um, he was still able to take time to consider other suffering and take note of the injustices that he witnessed. And although he did not speak out against slavery as an institution, he was very determined to make clear how they should not be mistreated. Um, he was sincere in his writings. Um, you know, I feel like at this time it's unfair to judge him too harshly because at this time this was the norm that there was slavery and even though now we look at it and know that it's wrong and how could they do this he doesn't see it that way simply because that's it was a different time um, he ends his narrative saying farewell my patient friends who have been pleased to pursue this narrative of my sufferings with any degree of sensibility particularly those whose sympathetic feelings have been roused by the distressing scenes that they met with within this reading. And then he says, claiming no merit than having spoken the simple truth. So I feel that he was speaking from his heart and even though 
he wasn't without his flaws and he might fall short sometimes and contradict himself sometimes um, because he couldn't see past living in an enslaved society. Um, but at his core, Seven was a good human being who I think he would be, I think now if he could see um, the impact that it had, I think he'd be pleased that his work did contribute to the eventual abolishment of human bondage. So that's it.